We good to go? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott White. Uh, it's S-C-O-T-T-W-H-I-T-E, and I am the Regional Director for American Medical Response AMR um, and Medic West here in Nevada. Uh, this is uh, an extremely uh, sad day uh, for us today. Um, as you know, um, we uh, had an accident uh, just before midnight uh, last night. Um, that accident uh, resulted in uh, the death of uh, a patient that uh, was in the vehicle um, and one of our crew members. Um, I'm going to be able to give you some specifics on the um, on the times, uh, but there are certain things that I cannot get into, um, and I would ask that you please um, respect the process and uh, notifications and such uh, that we need to make, and make sure that notifications and family members and whatnot um, have been made. Um, so I'll talk for a little bit, uh, and then uh, I'll open it up to a few questions. Okay, um, Nevada Medicar is a uh, subsidiary of AMR operating here in Las Vegas under the DBA AMR Transport. AMR Transport is our transport division, which means they handle inter-facility uh, transports, non-emergent. These are patients that may be transporting from one hospital to the next or being discharged home. Uh, they are non-medical in nature. They are non-emergent in nature. Um, however, the condition of the patient warrants that they may be in a wheelchair or bed confined, something of that nature. So we have a division specially dedicated to do that type of work. Um, at 11.29 last night, um, our, one of our uh, vehicles uh, began transporting out of a local hospital. And unfortunately, I cannot give you uh, that hospital just yet. Perhaps later this afternoon, we're still dealing with uh, some notifications. Um, but at 11.29 last night, we began transport uh, to a um, skilled nursing facility here in Las Vegas. Um, at 11.48, we heard a Mayday call over the radio. The driver of MC10, that's the unit number, MC10, called out Mayday twice, said it over the radio two times. Um, our dispatch notified our non-emergent supervisor our non-emergent supervisor gave direction to call for what's, what we refer to as a code five. A code five means that someone needs help. Code five then triggers a response to the fire alarm office and to law enforcement. Uh, because this was on uh, a highway, a freeway, the jurisdiction is uh, Nevada Highway Patrol, so everyone gets notified and we go to that scene to make sure everything's okay. We can tell where the vehicle is at based on vehicle locators that are in each vehicle we have, so the dispatch knew exactly where the vehicle was. Our supervisor uh, responded to the scene, along with our 911 supervisor, our emergency supervisor. Uh, they arrived at the scene to find Clark County Fire Department um, attempting to extricate uh, the uh, victims of this crash. Um, and unfortunately, uh, two uh, persons in that vehicle had succumbed to the injuries based on, uh, based on that accident. Um, our uh, employee uh, who uh, passed away last night, uh, his name is Gary John. He's been with the company for four years. He is, uh, is going to be sorely missed. He definitely uh, has a personality that, uh, that is very friendly in nature. People really like to uh, communicate with him and associate with him. And uh, so that's going to be hitting some of us pretty hard. I cannot uh, release the name of the patient that we were transporting. Again, uh, there are a certain protocol that's being followed uh, through the coroner's office, etc. Um, and I cannot uh, give you any particulars on um, the cause of the accident. It, that's under investigation. Um, I do want to thank uh, the Nevada Highway Patrol uh, for their work this morning um, and Las Vegas uh, Metropolitan Police Department. 
both those law enforcement agencies um, uh, treated uh, our employee like one of their own family members, uh, gave us a full escort. Um, uh, that was uh, very touching, and we, we definitely appreciate that. Um, uh, with that, uh, I'd like to, you want to say anything from, sure. the, from the NHP? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Jason Baracek with Nevada Highway Patrol, J-A-S-O-N-B-U-R-A-T-C-Z, UK. Uh, just to piggyback on what he said, this was a um, terrible thing what happened this morning when responders respond to these calls we never know what we're going to get and then we roll up to this one and it's a uh, patient and another first responder so it truly hits home for all of us here in clark county um, about the crash just like he said it's under investigation what we do know is it was raining in the area um, from what we know the the pavement was slick so we think this might have something to do uh, weather related um, Right now, that's all we really have. He covered uh, the identity of the first responder and, of course, the uh, patient under HIPAA laws and everything like that. The coroner will probably be releasing his name. Uh, that's all NHP has. Like I said, this continues to be under investigation. There is some dash camera footage that we're going to have to go over and uh, find out, piece this crash together and find out exactly what happened. Um, with that, does anyone have any questions for me or for AMR? Um, first responder, he wasn't in the driver, right? No, there was a driver and a first responder in the back with the patient. Was the driver injured? Uh, he was injured but non life threatening and he was released from the hospital a short time later. In this transport scenario, to what degree is that, that passenger for AMR restrained with the seat belt? How is, how is that handled? That's uh, for them, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, both, both the driver. Um, and the attendant are, are, uh, have seat belts. So just like you'd have in a car, um, in the back of this particular um, gurney van is what we refer to it as. Um, uh, there is a gurney, the patient is on the gurney, the patient is restrained to the gurney uh, with seat belts, and our attendant has a seat belt on. Um, I was personally at the scene this morning, um, and uh, our, our attendant uh, did have uh, that restraint system on. What would you always remember about Gary? You know, Gary is—he's uh, very—he's very quiet, um, but he's very personal too. He's not someone uh, to uh, to maybe um, impersonate a good time. You know, he—he he doesn't walk around uh, you know like that. He's just—he keeps to himself. He's very quiet, um, but he's—he's he's also very friendly. So it's a—it's a nice—it's a nice mix. Uh, one thing about Gary is he's a worker. You know, um, I think all of our organizations, we, we have those guys that just, they come to work, they, they get the job done, and they, and they go home. And that's, that was Gary. Never any issues. Last four years, patients respected him. His coworkers liked him and respected him. Um, and he's going to be sorely missed. Absolutely. Can you spell his name? G-A-R-Y and John. J-O-H-N. H? J-O-H-N. Oh, uh, his age. Oh, his age. He's 57 years old. I'm sorry, no, I, I don't have that information. No. Our, our shifts don't typically start that late at night. I would be assuming um, that, uh, that he probably came on at about uh, 6 or 7 at night, and they work uh, 10 to 12-hour shifts. You're on the front line of these emergencies. You've seen a, a lot of things. As first responders, how do you deal with the tragedy that hits home? Well, um, you know, that, that is certainly a tough one. And this is, uh, you know, for a lot of us standing up here, this is my 23rd year with the company. Um, and you have, uh, you, we see people at their worst. Um, and and we, we go to help. All of us got into this business to help. Um, it's just, it hits home when it's one of your own. Um, and we're still processing that. Is this your first line of duty death for AMR? It is uh, not the first line of duty death for AMR. Um, however, um, it is probably the first line of duty death uh, for this division of AMR here in Southern Nevada in at least 25 years. What would you say to the family and the patients? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, 
the, I mean, words can't express how we feel. Um, when, when we respond to a medical call or a trauma-related call, our, our folks, our EMTs and our paramedics work diligently to save that life. And, and when sometimes, you know, the patient may be too injured or too sick, and that hits home for our folks. They, they, they feel that, they carry that. Um, and to know that we had someone in our care and then we have this, uh, this issue, we, we definitely uh, are, are shaken up about that. I, I know that we will be making contact once we get through and navigate you know, all of the protocols with the family. I hope to make contact with um, Next of Kin and, and the emergency contact information that we have for, for the patient this afternoon. Um, in the meantime, I, I just want to send them our deepest condolences. Um, we, uh, we're hurting today because of this. Is there any kind of a procedure or practice that you guys have for uh, your attendants uh, to get into accidents like this? Uh, well, that's a good question. All of our employees um, who operate or work in a vehicle go through an emergency vehicle operations course. Um, and so there are uh, very specific things that each one of our folks learn during that course. Was Gary the one driving or was he next to the patient? Gary was next to the patient and, um, and he was the attendant. So uh, the driver was the one who called Mayday? The driver called out, uh, said Mayday over the air uh, two times and uh, was transported to UMC, was evaluated at UMC, um, and was discharged. What have you guys been able to learn from him after talking to him? All of that is still kind of under investigation and preliminary. It would be premature for me to say anything about that. Uh, can you expand on the training your drivers go through? Um, I know when you come in, are they go through training? Is that renewed or can you expand on yeah, we do have uh, continuing education. Um, and so all of our licensed personnel have a, a set number of continuing education hours that they do. For the driving portion itself, uh, there is a day that is spent in this classroom, the room that we're in today. Um, and, and then there is a day that's spent on a track um, navigating through corn, cone courses and such um, in, in order to operate the vehicle safely. We do not operate the vehicle in the same way that perhaps uh, a law enforcement training would be. Law enforcement training may include um, how to pursue a vehicle. We, we don't train like that. We train how to operate the ambulance safely, um, how to maneuver the ambulance safely through neighborhoods, understanding the dimensions of the vehicle and things of that nature. How about the vehicles? Are they, do they go under some kind of safety the, the vehicles are all uh, inspected and licensed. Um, we have um, our ambulances are licensed uh, and reviewed through the Southern Nevada Health District as an example. So um, those, those things do happen. And just like all of us that have cars, there's a registration and DMV process and everything else. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions. I'll go back to Gary. Uh, with two first responders to respond to the Gary, uh, working in that transport division, um, would not have been an initial first responder to that incident. Um, but I can tell you that everyone in this organization um, either worked in a direct role on 1 October or had a support role um, in 1 October or the days following 1 October. Uh, he, he's been here for four years, uh, and Gary is not an EMT. I know that that was reported this morning that he was an EMT. Uh, those individuals, again, as I've said, um, under the non-emergent, non-medical transport division are, are not credentialed licensed paramedics or EMTs. So would we call it for all as attendant? That an attendant is a good term. And how's the driver doing? The driver's doing fine. Um, he was uh, he was shaken up. He's definitely um, uh, you know the injuries, physical injuries, whatnot, very minor. Uh, so he's he's fine in that way, um, but he's devastated uh, by this incident. You know he's devastated that uh, that, the, that the entire thing happened, as as we all are, but they, particularly he is. Did they routinely work together? Uh, that I don't know, sir. You know the uh, age name. I, I do have that information, and I'm just not sure if I can release that information at this point. 
I can tell you that uh, I can tell you the length of his time here. He's he's worked here since December of 2016. And I, I know that it's still in the investigation, but can you say anything about his driving record or anything like that? Uh, no, sir. No, I can't. Sorry. You guys have a policy in place for when something like this happens. You know, how long how long does it take for people to get back on the after you know, I'd have to refer to our human resources department, but we do have a line of duty death policy. It's unfortunate that we have to have, uh, and it's, it's, it's multiple pages of how to notify family members and how to bring in our critical incident stress management teams, which will be on the ground here this afternoon, um, our employee assistance programs, etc. I would be guessing, because I, I, I don't know the time frame in which he would be allowed to return to work. I, I couldn't answer that. Um, it could possibly be. Yeah, I was going to say, for you guys, too, I mean, you guys had counselors that visit the Counselors will be on, on property this afternoon um, and as long as we need them. Um, 1 October being a, a, a great example, we brought teams of counselors in that were here for multiple weeks. We'll allow for one more question. Uh, right now, it's still being investigated, but it appears that uh, he was on um, the roadway. It was wet, as we say, there was rain and it was in a curve. So there's many things that could have happened. Uh, being on a slick roadway in a curve, that's something our investigators are looking into. And as I also mentioned, there's dash camera footage, which will uh, help our investigators greatly uh, to determine what exactly happened. Uh, he was going northbound on 15, getting off on the 215 westbound exit. So he was in the left-hand curve, and he lost control and went off the roadway to the left. So. We good? Guys, thank you very much. <coughs> uh, before you guys leave, I'll get you guys my contact information if you guys want to do any follow-ups. My name is Damon Schilling. I'm the public information officer for both AMR and MedicWest. I'll get you guys my card before anything happens. So, thank you.